Okay, so that's all fine. But what I'm going to do first is create the register page so we have a username there and then which we can then use to test. So what I'm going to do here is copy this, paste it underneath here, and this is going to be post and then maybe register. Admin register. So this is going to be post register. And now we're going to have to add a few more things to our app.js. So let's start by, okay, let's add the cookie parser. Equals require, and this is going to be cookie parser like so. And the cookie parser is going to help us to grab the cookies, save cookies, and so on. And the cookie is going to be used to store or session when we log in. So we don't have to keep logging in every time. And then we're going to use Mongo store. So const Mongo store equals require. And then require Mongo connect. Sorry, connect Mongo. Like so. We also need to add the cookie parser as a middleware. So somewhere around here, we can do app.use and then cookie parser like so. And for the sessions, we can add this as well. We can do app.use and then the sessions have a lot of settings, but I'm going to do the very basic ones from the official documentation. So we're going to have a secret and the secret you can put as whatever you like. So I'm going to do keyboard cat, which is exactly the same as the example on the internet. Resave is going to be set to false. Safe initialize is going to be set to true. Then store, we're going to use Mongo store dot create. And then this is going to create the cookie for it. So Mongo URL. And then process dot env. And then the Mongo URI. So MongoDB underscore URI. URI, which is the one in .env here. That's it. You can also set the cookie expiration and max age. I'm going to paste a comment in here just so you have it if you wish to trial it. And then you can see the cookie expiration day in the console if you uncomment this and so on. Yeah, ignore this one here. Sorry. And that's all good. All right. Let's return to the admin route. And at the top, we're going to insert a few more things. So I'm going to insert bcrypt const const bcrypt equals require. And then inside here, we require bcrypt. And then this is going to help us decrypt the password so we can store it in the database. And also I'm going to do const jwt. And this is going to help us with the cookie require and then JSON web token like so. And now we can start using them. All right, for the register, let's scroll down a little bit more. Let's remove everything and start from here. So we have const username and password, which we're getting from the register form. And now we want to hash the password. So we can do const hash password. And this is going to be equals await and then bcrypt and then dot hash. And then inside here, we're going to put the data to be encrypted. So this is going to be password. And then the sort rounds. So to be used uh, in encryption, if specific number is a sort will be generated in a specific number round and used. So I'm going to put 10 in here and we should be good to go. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create the user. So we're going to wrap everything into a try catch. And inside the try, we're going to do const user equals await and we're going to use or user model which we inserted here at the top user so user dot create and then inside here we can pass the username and then we can pass the password but the password that we want to pass is the encrypted one we don't want to pass the plain text in the database so we're going to put hash password uh, just for testing purposes I'm going to do rest dot status and then i'm going to put 201 and then maybe dot json and then i'm going to put a message in here say message user created 
and then I'm going to put the user. This is just for testing purposes. Feel free to create a page where you can display the user. So that should be all good. But if we get an error, let's do an if error dot we need to get the code and this is going to be equals equals one one zero 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 and then inside here we can put res dot status four or nine and then dot json and then this is gonna display a message user oops user already in use like so and then the last one is going to be inside here res.status and this is going to be a status of 5000 500 sorry and then dot json and we're going to put message and then internal server error save this and let's see whether our register is working if i go back if i open the database super quickly if we refresh we'll probably have the database created here users but there will be there won't be anything inside this is actually created automatically when we when we created the schema the schema automatically created this table for us so we didn't have to do anything special but now let's see whether we can add a new user so if we go to admin and we probably have an error okay so session is not defined okay let's have a look okay uh yep this is because i did not put express session in here so we need to do const session and this is going to be equals require and then we require express session whoops express session let's see whether this works okay we're getting a session express session deprecated okay save finish late option provide save initialize option okay we can do that so where we have the secret resave safe initialized yeah i already have that so maybe i misspelled it yep okay i misspelled it so that needs to be safe initialized to true save it and now yep now the error is gone which is good and if we go to admin refresh we should be good to go okay let's try to register a username of ruddy and a password of password register and as you can see we have this json object that says user created username is ruddy and you can see that the password is hashed as well and each username has a unique identifier and if you go to the database and if you refresh you will see that we're getting the username in here awesome we don't really need the register anymore uh, i will leave this here but what i'm going to do for the register let's go here and let's remove it i'm going to comment it out like so and we should be good to go whoops cool now let's do the login and let's have a look at how we can save the cookie into the browser so we can stay logged in so this is going to be a little bit more complex let's go back we've already got the login router here which is this one check login let's remove this in fact i'm wondering whether you know what i'm gonna copy and save this for everybody so i'm gonna have it inside here if somebody wants to try it out and now we can modify this and make it a little bit better so well we'll have to make it use the database inside the try catch we're getting the username and the password from the request dot body when we use the login form we're gonna type the username in here we need to get that username and check in the database to see whether that username is available let's do that so we can do const user equals await user dot find one this one here and then we can pass the username from here just like so let me make some space if we don't get the user then we want to do something we want an error uh, we want to display an error you want to display a message whatever you want to do so I'm going to do return and then I'm going to do res.send, no status. And then I'm going to do the status of 401.json and then I'm going to display a message inside here, which is going to say message 
invalid credentials. You could say invalid user, but then but then a hacker will know that that user doesn't exist. So you might as well just say invalid credentials instead. Don't give them any hints. If we do get a user, then we can do const is password valid. And this is going to be equals await. And then we're going to do bcrypt dot compare. And, where, and then we are going to compare the password that is coming from the form with the password, with the user password, like so. If the password is not valid, then we can return, let's copy this, and then I can return rest of status for one JSON message if valid credentials one more time. Again, don't give them any hints that the password is wrong. And now what we can do, we want to save a token to the cookie. So what I'm going to do is const token equals jwt.sign and then inside here we can do user id we're going to be using the user id which is unique so user dot underscore id then i'm going to provide a secret so i'm going to call this one jwt secret and we're going to create this jwt secret right now i'm going to grab it super quickly Let's go to .env and let's create our secret here. And this is going to be something like my secret blog. That's it. And now we can grab this. So I'm going to use JWT secret. I'm going to put it, let's put it at the top here. So we're going to do const JWT secret is equals uh, process dot env and then dot whatever I call them JWT secret. Okay, so this is going to be the secret word that we use. And now we can save this token into cookies by using dot res, res dot cookie. And then we can do token. You can, you can name it whatever you like. And then we can pass the token from here, which is going to be a secret token that is randomly signed with JWT and our secret. And then this is going to be HTTP only. And now we can set this to true. Okay. The last thing that I'm going to do is redirect to the dashboard, which we haven't yet created. So instead, let's do res.redirect. And then I'm going to do dashboard. And we're going to have to create this route in a second. Yeah, let's create that route super quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and create it inside here. Copy this and I'm just going to do res.get and then dashboard. And then inside here, we're going to do res.render and then we're going to render the admin and then dashboard like so. I'm not going to pass anything else just yet. Hopefully we'll be fine. Let's go here. Let's go to admin and let's create the dashboard. So views, admin and then. dashboard tjh dashboard okay save this and let's see whether this works okay no errors so far if i put one two three one two three we're getting invalid credentials we're getting invalid credentials which is great and now what i need to do is let's put ruddy and password press enter and as you can see we have been redirected to the dashboard and if i do right click inspect and if you go to application, you will see that we're getting under cookies here. If you click on it, you'll see that we are getting this token. So this is the cookie that is going to keep us logged in. And if I was to remove it, nothing will happen because this, we don't have a guard for this page yet. So we need to set a little guard that is going to, is going to basically log me out if I don't have the uh, cookie, if that makes sense. So we're going to do that. Now I'm going to call it off middleware and I'm going to put it here at the top. It's getting complex now so i'm gonna get this and i'm gonna set this is gonna be check login let's remove the get and this is just gonna be a middleware function that's gonna help us out so let's do const and let's call it auth middleware 
and this is going to be equals request response and next now what i'm going to do inside here i'm going to do const token and now we need to get the cookie from the browser so we can do request dot cookies dot token is the name of the cookie that we set and now we can check if we have the token we can do re return and then rest dot status and then 401 dot json and then message unauthorized so and then else we can do try const decode it and now we can verify the jwt the jwt with the secret that we've set so we can do jwt dot verify the token to see whether it's uh, it has the same secret that we're using so jwt secret which is here from our process dot env file and now we can do request dot user id equals decoded dot user id and then we can do next and then we can do catch we're catching the error and now let me put this together and now we can do the same thing here if we get an error let's remove that then we can do rest.status 401 json message unauthorized now in order to have pages that require login all we need to do is add this middleware to the pages so for example everybody can visit this login page because we need it in order for us to log in so we that's fine but if we go to for example the dashboard we don't want everybody to be able to visit this page therefore we can put the middle end here and put a comma so now this is password protected and you can add this on all of your pages that you want to protect so if we go to the dashboard page now we're currently in the dashboard actually and if i refresh look at what happens unauthorized obviously instead of sorry obviously instead of unauthorized where is it um i don't know where it is now here so obviously instead of res.status you can do res.render and render a page if you wish so or or you can even render a message saying unauthorized and make your website look nicer than this but for this example this works perfectly fine and as you can see now we can't visit the dashboard anymore so if i go and log in one more time so admin and if i do bob123 we can't log in invalid credentials but now let's try to log in so i have my username as ready and password enter and now as you can see we are in the dashboard because we are authorized and this is purely because if i do inspect and if i go to applications it's purely because it's reading that to token it's checking to verify the jwt with our secret and or user id and we're able to log in if i was to delete this then we'll log out see i can refresh the page is working right but then if i delete the token or if i change the token slightly let's see if i can change it one two three now if i refresh we are unauthorized because this token is no longer valid and i can even delete it and so on